In this video I continue to consider Python namespaces and the focus in this video is on the Python global namespace. This is a computer program that we've seen previously in this short playlist on Python namespaces. If we consider this function within the program, we know that this function will have a local namespace that I'm showing here. And of course, this local namespace will be populated as shown here. There will be a dictionary. And what this dictionary does, it binds this name x to this instance of the string class that has the value of hello. And of course, this entry in the dictionary was the responsibility of this line of code. In other words, this line of code produced this entry. If we now turn our attention to this area of the program, we know that this will also have its own namespace and its namespace is shown here. And of course, if we think about how this is populated, it's populated as shown here. We will have here the name of the function and this is the instance of the function. This is the object of the function. And here you can see we have an entry where the name x is bound to an instance that has the value of one and that was produced by this line of code here and of course this entry in the dictionary was the result of this program statement here. If we consider both namespaces we can see that the name x appears in both namespaces. Now I've said it before as a human we may get confused with having x appearing in two places within the code. Python does not, however, because it keeps the x's separate by keeping them in their own namespace. The same can be said for the y name here. If we stay with the y name, we know that this name is bound to the instance of the string class that contains the word world, and this name is bound to the integer object that contains the value of 2. So as far as Python is concerned, it knows that these two are different because they belong to their own namespace. So far in this short series on Python namespaces, I've been referring to local namespace. And in this case, the local namespace is the namespace for this function. And this here, well, that's the namespace for this area of the program. And you can see I've just called it namespace. Well, in fact, what we have here is not something we really should just simply called namespace, it is the global namespace. So we really need to replace that, as you can see here, with global namespace. So it's no different than what we've been looking at previously, except now we can see that this is the local namespace that belongs to this function, and this area is the global namespace. This area of code produces this global namespace. And of course, we can gain access to the global namespace from anywhere within our programs. Let's now consider the runtime for this computer program, and we'll single step through the program code. The first two lines to execute are these two, and they will bind x and y to the appropriate integer object, which we can see here in the global namespace. When we come onto this line, it'll print what's in the global namespace, and you can see it prints the 1 and the 2. Now this line of the code will print the global namespace and you can see that goes across two lines here. And of course the bit of this global namespace I'm interested in are these three here. Because this is the name of the function and this is x and y and you can see they appear here within the global namespace. Of course the next line to execute is this and what this will do it'll invoke this here. And the first two lines set up the local namespace as can be seen here. And when we come to this line, we print the x and the y, which will mean we're printing the hello and the world. And you can see that in the output here. When we now come onto this line, what it will do, it'll print the local namespace. And we can see that it prints out the x and the y, which are the names that are shown here within the local namespace. The next slide is going to consider this computer program again, but after these two lines of code have been deleted. Here is the computer program, and you can see from this region we've removed 
x is assigned 1 and y is assigned 2. Let's now consider the local and global namespace for this amended computer program. Let's firstly consider the local namespace and look at the dictionary within that and we can see that the name x is bound to the instance of the string class that contains the value of hello. So this entry we can see was put there because of this line of code and this line of code is responsible for this entry. If we now turn our attention to the global namespace and have a look at the dictionary for that we can see there's only the one entry and this one entry is the name of this function and of course this is the instance of the function because remember everything in python is regarded as an object even a function is regarded as an object but we can quite clearly see here we have the local and the global namespace the runtime for this computer program is shown here let's now step through the code and look at the outputs given the first line to execute is this and of course that's responsible for executing this function and these two lines are responsible for setting up the dictionary as we can see here in the local namespace this line will print what we have within the local namespace and of course it'll print the hello and the world as you can see here now this line will print what's in the local namespace in terms of the names i.e. the x and the y here are the names that are within the local namespace and we can see that they are output here the function has now finished its execution so the code runtime will return to this line and what this line will do it'll print the global namespace and we can see that across these two lines and of course the only thing I'm interested in for the purpose of this video is this here the demo underscore fn which is this here the name that appeared in the global namespace when this line attempts to execute we get this error and we can see the error is here it says name x is not defined and in fact it would if we allowed it to carry on tell us that y was also not defined but we get as far as the first error here name x is not defined well it is defined it's defined here look but that's in the local namespace and we should know from looking at the previous videos in this short series on python namespaces that the global area of the code i.e this line cannot gain access to what's in the local namespace so the x and y which appear here in the function belong to the local namespace and here we cannot get at the x in the y this is the program i've just been considering and what i'm now going to do is to amend it as shown by this listing here and you can see the amendment appears here i've put the line global x and global y everything else about the program remains the same but note that these two lines are within this function I've now moved the program that shows the amendments to the top left corner of this slide so we can look to the local and global namespaces. So I'm going to consider the local namespace first, as you can see here. And I'm going to have a look at what belongs within the local namespace, i.e. what its dictionary will look like. And you can see I've actually put this there because the dictionary is empty. But here you can see I'm still using X and Y. But what I've done here, I've said that they are global. Now that moves the X and the Y to the global namespace. They now do not belong to the function in the local namespace. Let's now consider the global namespace for this computer program and look to its dictionary. And here we can see the dictionary and what we can see clearly is we still have the name of the function appearing within the dictionary but we now also have the x and the y and the x and the y appears in the global namespace because of these two lines of code here of course this line will still work because the name x appears in the global namespace and remember that when you're dealing with the code inside a function the function will have access to the global namespace it's the other way round that's the problem code in the global area of your program will not have access to the local namespace in this case if we look at the local namespace we can see it is empty there's nothing in it that's because we have moved the x and the y to the global namespace 
Let's now consider the runtime for this computer program. This line will execute first, which will result in the function executing, and these two lines will set up the X and the Y in the global namespace. This line will be responsible for binding the name X to the instance of the string class that has the value of hello. This line, well, it will be responsible for binding the name Y to the string instance that contains the value of world. This, well, it'll print the X and the Y. And of course, it'll print this X and Y because it only has X and Y in the global namespace. Because if you look at the local namespace, the X and the Y no longer belong in here. They've been moved to the global namespace. Consequently, this line will output this. If we now move on to this line of code, we can see it will print the local namespace. And you can see it prints this, telling us that the local namespace is empty. We now leave the function and we return to this line. And what it does, it prints the global namespace, which you can see on these two lines. And of course, the bits I'm interested in are these three here. You can see we have the name of the function and we have the X and the Y. Of course, the next line to execute is this, and it'll print X and Y. And naturally, it'll go to the global namespace, and it'll print the hello and the world, as you can see here. Now, in this computer program, I've shown the effect of putting global in front of the names of variables, as you can see by these two lines of code here. Now, I'm showing you this, but I'm recommending you never do this. It's not a good idea to use globals in any case, but I certainly wouldn't start promoting variables declared in functions to be globals because it makes it very difficult to find bugs in a program that's very large. So although I'm showing it you here, I'm only doing so to emphasize the difference between local namespace and global namespace. And whereas this is possible, I wouldn't bother doing it if I was you. So in this video we've considered the local namespace and we've also considered the global namespace and we've seen the dictionaries that appear in both and the reason why those dictionaries are as they are what i'd like to do now is just to concentrate on the global namespace and consider this this namespace includes names from various imported modules that you're using in a project it is created when the module is included in the project and it lasts until the python script ends now what does this mean well it means as a programmer you can assign two variables you can bind a variable name to an appropriate object and they will appear in the global namespace if you've been doing that coding in the global area of your program. But if you, for example, import TK Inter, you will find that everything that's defined in that module will be put in your global namespace. And it is often said that you will get a bloated namespace for everything that you import will appear in the global namespace. Now this can give problems and we're going to look at that in the next video, particularly with reference to TK Inter. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?